Contrary to what you might think, aeroplanes don't actually need to be symmetrical. Although most aircraft have lateral symmetry between the left and the right sides, a few standout examples of asymmetry are scattered throughout the history of aviation. Take the BV-141 for example, or the Rutan Boomerang. Both of these aircraft look absolutely baffling at first. How on earth do these things actually fly? Don't they just go around in circles? Well, to answer that question for myself, I decided to build this, which is an experimental RC aeroplane. I'll explain how, how asymmetrical aeroplanes work, I'll show you how I designed this thing, and then of course we'll take it out to a field and fly it. <laughs> because uh, that should be, well, quite interesting. Okay, so what is the theory behind asymmetrical design? Let's break it down into three main design principles. So first of all, you need to find the center line of the aeroplane. This means finding the center of the wing, where the left and right sides are producing equal amounts of lift. You might think, well, that's fairly straightforward. It's just half the length. But you will need to discount the areas covered by the fuselage, pod, or whatever, which obviously mean there is no lift being made there. With my plane, this was fairly simple as I designed it to have a nice straight oblong wing with no tapering and where there's just a pod and a fuselage to subtract from the total lifting area. So after working this out, we can say with some certainty that the lateral balance point of this aircraft goes here. The second design element concerns the offset thrust angle. Now here's the key thing, having the motor offset from the centerline is actually okay, especially when it's to the left of the centerline. You see, you might think that the motor being offset would result in the plane hopelessly going around in circles, but in moderation, the moment of torque that this offset produces is actually very minor and can be trimmed out with the rudder. Interestingly enough, aircraft in the real world um, have historically used asymmetry in a less noticeable way to deal with the effects of engine torque. One such example comes from the Second World War with the Makachi 202. In a seemingly bold move, designers counteracted torque by lengthening one wing that would create more lift on that side. It's quite noticeable actually when you look hard enough from a top-down view. Thirdly, drag from unevenly distributed pods engine nacelles, random fuselages you've got going on wherever, um, they aren't enough of a concern to be worried about. Essentially, the drag from the pod on the wing of this plane is not significant and can be ignored. However, if you were to put a pod far out on one of the wingtips, then you might start noticing the effects of it. For my aircraft, I made sure that the pod was fairly close to the center line so that I didn't have to worry about that. However, to make this video a bit more interesting, I designed the pod and fuselage to be slidable so that they could be moved around and played around with so that I could experiment with positioning and balance. Now it's all very well and good knowing all of this stuff in theory, but if you've watched this channel for a while, you'll know that what I like to do is put stuff to the test. With this in mind, I took the asymmetrical plane out to a top secret test field um, <laughs> over here in Derbyshire, not so secret. It was quite windy, so yeah, uh, here's what happened. It was um, an interesting experience, to say the least. Whoa! It works! Hooray! Okie dokie, it's pretty windy, so I'm gonna bring it around so it's actually in camera. Yeah, it's clearly defying whoa, all norms of aviation here. I'm just gonna try and hover it over here. <laughs> I'm not sure if you saw that, but it came between the cameras then. <laughs> yes! That was um, some pretty interesting flying, to say the least. Despite the wind, it did seem that this plane was actually flying quite well. But how well would it fare if the pod and fuselage positions were changed? Yeah, so we've got a bit of, uh, bit of wonkiness going on with these pods, just because of the impact on the, uh, the ground. Everything still appears to be working. So let's change this pod around, let's move that out over the wing and, and this over here. If we move this out now, we should see what the characteristics of having a greater um, moment of torque on the plane is. Benefits of a modular design. Now where did I put my tape? Whoa! Saved it! That looks absolutely ridiculous. 
get it into a high alpha bit of throttle. Whoa. <laughs> it's actually flying better when it goes fast. Oh, I think we're running out of battery. Yeah, we're definitely running out of battery. See if we can get it home. Nope. <laughs> oh, that was really fun. Ah. Oh. Success. So that was interesting. Um, if you'd like to build this plane, then you're in luck. I have a website called www.projectair.co.uk and that's where you'll find um, the templates to cut out your own um, asymmetrical plane of this design and build it for yourself and do some experiments. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Uh, like it if you did uh, <laughs> and I will see you on the very next one. Um, thanks very much for watching. Really appreciate it. Thank you.